This is Joe, Michelle, Melissa, and Shannon with More Than a Sniff, where we talk about everything dog, from training to nutrition, from behavior modification to grooming, from vet visits to dog parks, from getting to know us to having guests. Today we're going to talk about the herding group, and I think hands down the herding group is kind of a passion right now of all of us, and and, um, we've been really involved in it and so I think it's an easy group to talk about but I think it's a hard group to talk about as well because we just don't feel like the herding dogs are really for most people. My neighbors just got a herding dog and I summed this up to her because she told me that everybody told her she was making the biggest mistake and I said either you're going to be ruined for every other dog the rest of your life because this is going to be your your life dog or you're going to regret every day yep. of this dog. Like yep. that That's really what I have found with herding group. It's either you love them yeah. to the point that it's kind of disgusting, or they are not, they are miserable in your house. Yep, 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 I agree, I agree. Um, I've, I've always, you know, from the start of my entire dog training journey, um, has, I've always had a herding dog, and, um, you know, even my shepherds were, East German herding lines. They weren't your classic shepherd. And so always had herders in the house and it just seems to be a really great fit for us and for me. Um, But they're definitely not for the majority of people. Um, And so I think it's, it's a fun group, but it's a, uh, it's a hard group to talk about because I think more than anything, it's about um, not sharing (laughs) If that's the best way to say. Um, but also, when you get the bug, you really get the bug with it. Um, Shannon, talk about your overall experience with the herding group and your journey right now. Well, I guess, Mike, for going even back to being a child, um, my uh, grandpa owned Border Collies and trained them for a rodeo show. He was a school teacher, and in the summer, he'd go on the rodeo circuit with his dog show, and he had all these crazy four border collies that he taught to ride bicycles and jump rope, and he was on a newsreel at the beginning of the movie, you know, the newsreel would go, and he had several newsreels about him that we have on tape, and so, and so my uncles and aunts, and my mom doesn't like dogs, she likes them if they're not hers, <laughs> but all her brothers and sisters all kind of had this love for that breed of dog because even though those were not family dogs and they weren't in their house you know they were in the dog run outside and they were for work and they did their show it some it instilled this like love of dogs it like into our family because like my grandpa had had these dogs so um and then uh after that um everyone in our life always had like terriers (laughs) like schnauzers and you know things like that so no one ever has had one a, a herding dog, um, really until like all of m- me and my sisters all grew up. And then we like all have a herding dog. So my sister Carly has a German shepherd. I have an Australian Kelpie. My sister Erin has an Australian shepherd and she had a healer before that. And then, um, my sister Letty has a dog that is at, that was purported to be as a hound at the adoption place, but I think it has Kelpie in. So so somehow it like <laughs> like went from my grandpa to us <laughs> that we all got these herding dogs, and they're just uh, like special in the way that if your brain thinks the same way that they do. It's like they have this hold of this place on your mind and your heart that there's like not a space for another dog to go, <laughs> which is weird because I've, I have lots of other dogs um, and have worked with other dogs in my life. But it's like um, I got uh, my, current, my Kelpie Dutch um, because you called and said, hey, do you want this dog? And I said, yes, <laughs> you know. And it's like from that day, what do I say to you all the time? Joe, this dog's special. <laughs> You know, she's less like this special dog to me. So I don't know how to explain it because you like have to experience it like for yourself to see like if it meshes, I think. I think the difference is just thinking about this out is I think the majority of people want a dog and they want that relationship. They want, they want their dog to listen to them and, and then not, not saying herding dogs won't listen to you because obviously, but 
I think the biggest difference that I have found with my herding dogs is that you have a partnership, not mm-hmm. a owner dog relationship. Yep. Um, yep. And if you're not willing to put the time in to create and like develop that partnership, it is going to be a nightmare because the dog is going to take over yep. and be the leader and it's going to be bad. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. Melissa, talk about your herding dog journey. Um, so kind of like Shannon going way, way back. Um, my family's all farmers. Um, we had cows and sheep and a dairy <laughs> and each different member of the family. So like one yeah. of everything. Yeah. Um, and so every spring and fall we would, our family reunion was taking the cows or sheep off the mountain. Mm-hmm. And so I saw herding dogs first working. We had growing up Sharpies and Labs and my, as our house pets yeah. and the herding dogs worked on the farm. Mm-hmm. And so I grew up just amazed by these, I used to call them magic horses when mm-hmm. I was younger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I was really bad at picking out animals apparently, but um, how they would just work. Mm-hmm. And they were by the horse stalls, which is why I called right. them magic horses. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, but just that level of partnership yep. w- stood out to me even when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and now with my dogs and doing stock dog stuff and herding, like Michelle said, it's a partnership. Mm-hmm. You don't, if you don't hold up your end of the deal, they let you know. Yeah. Um, and if there are days that it's just super fun that how in sync we all are mm-hmm. to the point that it's cre- not creepy, but weird mm-hmm. and people notice it, mm-hmm. which is the hardest thing for me is because I'll have new clients say, oh, I want the relationship you have with your dogs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm like, sorry, you, you're not. Yeah. It's different. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like, oh, Ari, this is special because everyone has a great relationship with their dog. Right. But if you're not a herding dog person. Yeah. You can't replicate that. Right. Um, Because they're on a different plane. Yeah. They think. And they can be great, but they can be horrible. And we've all had clients that. Yep. Like I've had clients with border collies that I'm like, whoa, you're a little demon. Yeah. Yep. Because I don't see that with mine. Mm -hmm. Why? Like they all act up, obviously. But. Yep. Um. It's just an intense group Mm -hmm. yeah. that will call you out on stuff if you're not ready for it. So talk a little bit about the direction that Cooper was headed in when when you called me as a dog trainer. Yeah, so um, we got Cooper as a puppy, Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't... We didn't have experience with her level of border collie Mm -hmm. in our home. Mm -hmm. And so we failed her in that we didn't give her enough jobs. Mm -hmm. And we didn't take control in that way. Um, She needs more structure than what we were giving her. She's very, everything has to be a job. Mm -hmm. So she has so many little things that she does around the house just because she always is so intense. Right. And we didn't give her that. So she was making her own jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, And her own job was managing the door. Yep. And managing the windows. And she was intense. And so when she, in herding dogs see chaos, they make order. Right. She was seeing chaos and we didn't listen to her. Yep. And she was being subtle about it. So she had to be strong and mm-hmm. right. with the doors and everything. Right. Um, which is amazing that she still has that mm-hmm. intensity. Yep. Um, but we give her jobs. And now that we've given her more jobs and right. she goes herding and. Yeah. Like, when I say she has jobs, like, from when she wakes up, from when she goes to bed, she is yeah. doing stuff. Yeah. Um, just because she, that's what makes her happy and what right. she needs to do. Right. Um, but most people can't do that. Yeah, it's a lot of time. It, t- it does. It yeah. takes a lot of time for us right. to be, like, like the laundry basket yep. thing. That's, she used to try to hurt us. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh, okay, now we need a job here. Right. So right. she pulls the laundry basket from our bedroom to the laundry room yeah it would be so much easier if i could just grab the basket right right but now i have to tell her to pull it yeah and once she pulls it she's fine and she'll yeah she her she did her job right um, right but just thinking of having some people do that you've right. got to work with a hurting dog yeah yeah because <laughs> you can't just expect them to sit and be happy in your right. yard right yep michelle talk about your hurting dog Oh, I could talk about herding dogs all day. This is fun. <laughs> so I grew up with sporting dogs. We always had sporting dogs, even when I was a kid and I really wanted a little dog. My, mm-hmm. my parents got a Cocker Spaniel mix. We always had sporting dogs growing yeah. up. Um, and they were never my dogs, ever. Like, yeah. none of, like, thinking back, like, I, I did, I, I don't want to say tortured, but I did make sure. our Britney Spaniel work for a, a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. He was, but he, he still never really liked me, yeah. which is kind of funny to yeah. think of now. But, um, 
And then when I turned 17, my parents, I begged my parents for a Papillon. Mm -hmm. Begged, begged, begged. And my mom was, she was totally willing to go to a breeder. And actually, strangely back then, because they're everywhere now, we could not find a breeder in Mm. Utah. This was not that long ago. Yeah. That, the dog that I ended up getting is still alive, so it wasn't that long ago. Right, right. Um, and my mom was, she was totally willing to go out of state to get a dog for me and stuff like that, but she took me to, uh, like, an adopt-a-thon. Yeah. And I just picked out this random dog, and she's a, uh, my best guess is that she's an Australian Shepherd Chow mix. I uh-huh. think they said she was a Chow Shelty mix, but that doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she instantly became my dog. Yeah. And that, I mean, I think that's when the, my love of herding dogs started. I mean, Chows are very, very one person dogs right. too. So right. she, she, you know, um, yeah. but her, with me and her were definitely, a, we were more of a with partners. We did everything together. Yeah. My dad used to call her my shadow. She went everywhere with me um, until I got married and then she didn't like my husband. So she stayed with my parents <laughs> right. and she's, she's my mom's dog now, yeah. which has turned out really great. Right. Um, and then we got my two littles and then we ended up getting Murphy um, and honestly, at that point, like herding dogs were not, not on my radar, but they really weren't like a passion or like a thing mm-hmm. of mine yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but you helped us get Murphy mm-hmm. and, and thinking back about it, Murphy, like now he is, he is that dog I was talking about earlier that no dog will ever compete with him. Yeah. No dog in my life ever will. Um, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem like it now because, as Melissa was saying, her dogs need jobs. Murphy doesn't need a job now. Yeah. His job now is really just to be with us. Like, right. it really, he, he's never been that, like, I mean, Border Collies are a lot different. Right. Having June, she's a lot different and stuff like that. But yeah. he, he really doesn't need that. But looking back, it was, I mean, it was hours and hours we mm-hmm. spent on him. Like, mm-hmm. it was, I mean, we did do rally with him, which, I mean, we didn't have to. But, like, I think that that really created our partnership, right. not right. the dog owner relationship. We had, we worked, we found a way to work together with that. Um, and now we're into the herding dog world with him and he is intense. Yeah. And I wish we would have done it when he was a lot younger, <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> yep. but he doesn't need that crazy na- craziness now, but he is seven. So, yeah. yep. um, and now June's in our life and, and June is a, a totally new fun experience. <laughs> Um, but as we're sitting here talking all of this out, I think it's funny because as I was saying earlier, we just got a new fence. Um, so I've been throwing her out like when we didn't have a fence for like a week there, me and her really started to create that partnership yeah, yep. and she really liked me and we were, we were grooving really well together and yeah. she was actually playing what she hasn't done yet since she's been staying with us with me. Like mm-hmm. she'll play with the other dogs, but she right. actually was like running and chasing and like with me and stuff. And now that we have this new fence and I'm just throwing her outside, I can see that back slipping really bad. And yeah. I really think it's because we don't have that partnership together. Yep. Yep. She's not with us. Like, so yep. we are not doing that. So, um, as we're talking about this, I'm thinking of the things that I can start doing to, <laughs> to actually <laughs> right. like force her be a part of our, our yeah. family and stuff like yeah. that. So we can all start creating that harmonious right. relationship. Right. So Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that, um, I think that, you know, I'll say it over and over and over. I just don't think herding dogs are for everybody and I don't think they're for most people. And I think that they're, they can be the most extreme. I mean, my, my extreme herding dog is living at the ranch right now because he just can't function here in a way that is, um, balanced with what I have already. And, um, I'm hoping that the more, um, work that he gets under his belt, the higher the chance of him being able to come back and be okay here. Um, but there's that extreme and, and most herding dogs end up being biters if they're not managed well. And, um, there is something special about him and there is a bond, but I think that every herding dog should be given the opportunity to herd something whether that's the chickens, whether it's the ducks, whether it's the goats, or whether it's the cows, whether it's the sheep, I think that every herding dog should get to herd something at some point in time in their life, and I think that it will change everybody's life. I think if you don't give them that, they're going to find something to herd. It's going to be your cats or your kids, or uh, Murphy's popped a hole in me before. Not like He's never bit me, but like he's he's been chasing me and like hit me with (laughs) his teeth, and it hurts. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's just like, I mean, I don't think that the terriers need to kill rats every day um, or even once a week or even any time in their lifetime. But I think a herding dog, no matter what the breed, should get an opportunity to herd something in their lifetime. Um, Something good and something healthy that's not going to 
um, backfire on them. And, and sometimes the uh, manufactured herding stuff, like the balls and stuff like that, can actually make the dogs more frustrated because they can't completely control it. Um, and so I, I, you know, I really truly believe that if you have a herding dog, that that it is your responsibility to do something of some sort with them that they get to herd something in their lifetime. Um, and I think that it's probably one of the only breeds that I can actually, groups that I can actually say that about, um, that is something that's hard to replicate or hard to shift to make them um, great dogs. And I think that um, Melissa being that, you know, at the time when we were working Cooper and, and working through, you know, the stuff behaviorally, you know, we didn't have the ranch in our life at that point to give that to her. But, um, now that she's been out and working and hurting things, um, her drive is so high because it's like, it's been pinned up in her. And so the more that we do it with her, the more steady she's going to become and, and it's going to make more sense to her. But, but right now it's so, it is just the time of her life right now and, and oh, she's yeah. getting it out. Um, we can't say goat or yeah. anything that rhymes with yeah. goat yeah. without her freaking out yeah. and going to the door. Yeah. Like she like knows. ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And if we get on a dirt road, no matter where we are, she yeah. thinks it's goats. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, we were watching a movie and a goat <laughs> made a sound yeah. and she got so excited. Yep. Yeah. It was like. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's intense. It's really intense. And I think Murphy being older, um, but finally giving him that release, because he did some some sheep herding, which is a lot more controlled than than the stock dog stuff, where he's kind of found his element that he gets to be, uh, you know, the aggressive herder um, and release through it that he, you know, that's good for him. You know, I think the fascinating part about it is, too, is that I agree with you 100%, and I, and I really do feel like he comes home, and we only go out with him once a week. I feel like he yeah. comes home a much more mellow dog with everything. Yep. Um, but I also feel like the times, the, the jobs, that the, the herding jobs he was giving himself, yeah. um, such as chasing some of the border dogs, <laughs> chasing <laughs> the cat, yeah. I have more control over what he's doing now. Right. So right. it's not just chaos and him chasing and nipping dogs. Yeah. It's, I mean, he actually will go out and help me get dogs that are afraid and right. like push them out of like places and stuff like that. But it is, it's not this like fierce, like I'm going to grab this yeah. dog and bite it. Right. Which he never did. Murphy's really actually, yeah. but you he's know, intense. R- he's yeah. really intense, but yep. now it's a lot more like we actually know directions and I can call him off if I need to. And yeah. I, you know what I mean? Yep. So it's, I, there's so much about him that is, I feel like is so much more stable. Yeah. And and we're working together in that aspect now and not him just right. going out and we are having fun. Right, right. That just reminds me, Cooper loves to circle the lawnmower. Uh-huh. That's her or for sweeping, that's also one that yeah. she will yep. which is she, pretty classic. Yeah, and yeah. she used to just circle us and I would tell her down or uh-huh. I'd tie her to the porch. Yeah. Now I'll just it's funny, I'll be mowing the lawn and it's um <clears throat> it's just a manual one, yeah. so it's yep. not too loud. Right. And I'll just be like bye, away. And she just circles. Yeah. Down. Bye. Yep. Away. And so I'm just out in the yard mowing the lawn, but she's, her tail's down. Right. She's calm. Yeah. And it, it's not like a, <laughs> right. It's like, an, okay, it's time Towards to work, work and she'll yeah. just mosey down to the lawnmower now yep. and do her thing. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, I think, balances their head um, in a lot more ways than what you can even, for sure, even comprehend that it does. Um, Shannon, you haven't been out um, with Dutch in a couple of weeks. Um do you feel a shift in her? Like it's ready. We gotta, we gotta get out there and we gotta get get going with her. So she's not as intense as some of the dogs that you guys have, and I feel like that's actually because she was. I got her as a failure, right? Like the person that had her before said she's a hurting failure. I don't want her yeah. go live somewhere else. And so her part of her personality that makes her be <laughs> a failure <laughs> makes her be better at home. Yeah. So we're still in this like kind of like a transitioning period of what does my life look like now that I'm living at your house because she didn't live at a house before. So yeah, is it does has she have shifts in her personality? Yes. Is it negative for me? Not because part of it is um that I'm getting used to living at your house and we can do this instead, you know? But she does have um, less of a need to um, focus on things that happen outside the yard when we go herding. So when we go herding, like, she gets that all out on there. 
And when we don't, then it's like every bicycle that goes by or every cat that walks by, then it's like turns are on and you're like, no, 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 we're not hurting. We're in the yard. Remember, remember, we're, oh yes, we're in the yard, you know, but, um, she, I, like when your dog, Mick does, doesn't get a go, he's yeah. very intense yeah. And I feel like his energy gets more into naughtiness, right. like in, in a more severe way yeah. than I notice with Dutch. And I think that's just because her herding brain is more <laughs> of a failure. Yeah. She's yeah. good at herding, yeah. but she's not intense like yeah. Mick and June. Yeah. And so she doesn't, I don't see as much naughty things come out yeah. for that reason. So for me with right now with June, um, She's actually by far my less intense dog. Murphy is way more intense to go herding with. Um, but uh, kind of like what Shannon was just saying, for me, for me with June, it's really not that she's being naughty if we don't go every week. I just feel like we're progressing in other ways at home when she gets that release. Yeah. So yeah. we are bonding more. She's she's behaving better in the house. and so She's not going back. Like It really is right. just this, like, it, I think it's easier transition for her to be in the city. And yeah. I think that's kind of what you're saying with Dutch too, is that it's just a little bit easier for everything else yeah. if they get that out yeah. of their system. Yep. Yep. I agree. So Melissa, what advice would you give people looking um, and falling in love with the herding dogs? Um, ask yourself if you can give them an hour a day mm -hmm. to honestly, I would be like, okay, how much time are you going to give this dog? Yeah. Um, and if they can't say about an hour, then might yeah. not be the dog for you. Cause I, some days it will be an hour that you have to do something in it. Right. Sometimes it might be split up a little bit. Yep. Um, but think about if, and I don't know how to say this, but like, are you wanting a herding dog for selfish reasons? Right. Meaning, are you wanting a herding dog just so you can have a relationship? Mm -hmm. Um, or do you want a herding dog because you want to give a relationship right. too? Cause you have to give. Yeah. So if you yeah. can't give an hour, let's find another dog for right. you. Right. Right. And in, in our case, it's, um, three hours, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my advice kind of goes a little bit along with that. Um, and that is that it's not even just time. I mean, I, I think that they're some of the most, probably the easiest dogs to put outside and be okay outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, they're bred to be hardy and be outside. So it's yeah. not that you can't have an outside dog, but do not expect them to be an outside dog and you don't do anything with right. them. Um, expect them to, I mean, yes, I think there should be an hour a day that is like dedicated to them, but yeah. expect them to be a part of your life completely. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think that's what makes Murphy such a decent dog at this point. And actually I think he's fantastic, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> is he does everything with us. Yeah. If it's, if it's cool enough outside that he can go in the car with us, he yeah. goes everywhere with yep. us. Yep. He is not left out to just find things for himself to do. Right. At all. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping eventually June gets to be that way too. Right now we're still trying to figure each other out and, yeah. and create that partnership, but it's going to be a partnership, not a, Oh, you get to be alone in the crate all day and that, that's fine. Right. right. Yep. I agree. I think um, I think it's really good to think about the time commitment to herding dogs and and what it takes and what you have to accept. Um, I think that you, there's a lot that you have to accept um, that that's who they are and and um, and I think that you have to be willing to accept some of it. I have one more thing too. Yeah. If you have kids, reconsider. Yep. Especially if they're under the age of ten and they run. Yep. Reconsider yep. because. Most yeah. of them are biters at some point in their life, even if it's just to get that herding <laughs> yep. instinct out. Yep, I agree. I would say from uh, or owning lots of different kinds of dogs, that the herding dog is a actually the most time commitment uh, as close to having an actual child as any other dog I've had. Because you have to structure something for them to do all 24 hours of the day and sleeping and all of that is part of that but you you have to have a plan where you commit to like this is what you dog are doing <laughs> and whether that's with me or not is is part of that but but you have to like plan out all your dog's time which is like ridiculous if you just want a dog to sit on your lap do not <laughs> do not get a herding dog you know you have to be prepared to like do that structure it like it's a kid, you know, I say that not having any children, but I have worked with children. I have babysat children. And to me, like of all the dogs I've had or worked with, like it's the closest analogy of like, of having an actual child of any dog that I can think. I think on the kid thing, um, there's, there's a very black and white line that happens with, um, 
a lot of the ranch um, families and the rodeo families will have a herding dog and their kids are um, scooting around. I mean, it's, you know, they're playing in the dirt, they're running up, chasing cows. I mean, the kids are everywhere, but the dog, the dog almost looks at them like they're another dog and, and oops, if you get, you know, catch some teeth, you know, cause uh, oops, if you fall down, you'll be all right. Ew, oh, oops, you fell off the fence. It's okay. Right. You know, um, oh, the dog bit your ankle. Well, don't run, you know, where having a herding dog in the city, yeah, that's not how, um, that's not how society treats our kids in, oh, darn it, darn it, hate it when that happened, just don't run anymore, you know, you just don't, you don't play that same game, it's just not, it's just lifestyles are so completely different that, um, that, you know, city and suburbia, um, and herding dogs with kids are a really hard match, for sure. Um, the dogs need an out, and and sometimes you need some sturdy kids for that to be an out, and that's on the ranch life, and the, and the rodeo life. So um, we have a hard time teaching our kids to get back up on the horse if you don't have a horse to get back up onto. And and I, so I think that's really the biggest thing that we're talking about with you know with it is is um, herding dogs are really not for everybody. Mm-hmm.